you, everyone. Um, as, as you said, it's fantastic to be the only man on this panel. And, and But I'm very glad to see that a lot of many other men who are here in the audience right now, because it, it, it really is all about equality at the end of the day, right? Um, I, I'm mindful of time, so I will jump straight into it. The very first thing that I want to ask all of you, when we look at um, sport in general, there is, there is this one stat which gets thrown at us uh, pretty much all the time about how women are athletically inferior to men. And one of the things that gets thrown up is the fact that the 100 meter dash, which is the epitome of athleticism in that sense uh, for, for many, many years, um, and the men are much faster than women. Right? The, world, the men's world record is 9.58 seconds. The women's world record is 10.49 seconds. So clearly it would be fair to say that uh, men are faster than women, correct? Just, just, just say yes or no, please. That's, that's the assumption, right? Men are faster than women? I'm seeing a lot of nods, I'm not hearing yeses, but yes, then that's fine. Good, thank you. You're all wrong. You're absolutely wrong, because if you move on, this fact is, uh, is the one that everyone uses to show that um, men are athletically superior to women. It's also the fact which is, in my opinion, the most misused to hide the truth. Because guess what the truth is, and this is, this is all based on facts. The truth is, men in 62 countries, 62 is a large, large number, but men in 62 countries are slower than the world's fastest woman. That's one third of the entire world. Now, if you look at women otherwise in sport as well, and in the 100 meter race, uh, Flo Jo, Florence Griffith, who holds the world record, if she was running in 1920, she was the world's fastest human. Prior to that, prior to Flo Jo, we had Renate. If she was running in 1903 and not in 1973 when she set her record, she'd be the world's fastest human. Women, at the end of the day, right? And this is, this is true of all of society. In everything that, that goes on. The only difference here is they're a few decades behind. That's it. In terms of ability, they've always caught up. Because they've done it by themselves. Sight is not necessarily health. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not politically correct, so please don't mind me when I say these things, right? Um, but at the bottom line is it's a, it's a matter of time. And if you look at a majority of our world, we, women are athletically as, as good as men are. Right? And it's controversial. We can talk about it offline later. Even if you look at uh, just biology in general, um, to the time that women, girls uh, don't hit puberty and boys don't hit puberty, you're looking at the age groups of 10, 11, and 12, there isn't much that separates uh, girls and boys. And there's, there was a study conducted um, in Australia, and because we're sitting in the Australian High Commission right now, where, where the Australians have effectively proven the fact that in the age groups of six, seven, eight, and nine, you're looking at uh, the ability to jump, the ability to run fast, uh, the ability to throw, there isn't much that separates men and women. So, pulling it back to what we at 8-1 are doing. We at 8 one are following the unpopular path, and, and Sara, you mentioned it briefly in terms of gender equally, and that may not necessarily be the best way forward. But uh, I'll tell you this much, that it is the toughest way forward from our standpoint. Because we have gone ahead and started a gender neutral league. We started uh, our first baby league, and which was Coincidentally, also India's first baby league, uh, the fact which is not something that we're very proud of. We're proud of the baby league that we've started. We're not proud that we were the first ones to start it because clearly this should have been happening for years prior to even before I was born, literally. But uh, we started a general neutral league. Uh, we started it in uh, Mizoram, in Champai, with the help of uh, Mr. Hamad, who's sitting uh, at the back, and he's been a great support for us to do what we've been doing. We had no compulsions for women to enter our league. Uh, we, had, uh, we didn't make it mandatory for girls to be playing uh, a part of this league. In year one, we had eight girls playing amongst 300 boys, right? That's terrible, right? That's just a terrible ratio. But guess what happened next? This list is the top scorers from our season one. Number seven on that list is a girl. 
she wasn't compelled to play. She wasn't. It wasn't made mandatory for her to play. She was the MVP in her team. She was the highest scorer of her team. Week in and week out, she was ensuring that her team competes and is amongst the top teams uh, in her age division. Cut to to the next season. This time, another girl, a different girl, was number five. I didn't have to scroll down to the seventh because she's moved up to five now. And there's a completely different girl. Uh, the first girl's also playing well. She's scoring goals. And you've got more girls coming up and playing well. And we're, the number from eight has gone up to 26 now. It's natural, it's slow, but guess what? We're in it for the long run. But, uh, Mr. Hamar has been kind enough to allow us to be there for at least the next 10 years. And hopefully we'll be there for many, many more decades to come. And the whole idea that we've been trying to promote in the society and the reason why the participation of girls is going up, even though it's a gender neutral league and it's not a girls only league, is for the simple reason that girls are getting the feeling that guess what, I'm competing, I'm competing and I'm contributing to my community team as much as the boys are. There is no uh, question of them being um, in a league which is inferior in that sense and I use the word because everybody else does and I hate the word use the word inferior, but um, they don't get that sense. They're, they're competing, they're coming up, they're lining up to register now. From the 8th to the 26th, today we're in a position where by the time that we hit our third season in Champai and our second in Vishnupur, Manipur, where we're um, finding many more Bem Bems and many more Bala Devis, um, we'd be hitting 60 at the bare minimum, because that, that's the number of pre-registration that have already taken place. Now, um, it's small numbers, it's not large, but, but the bottom line that I'm trying to say, and it makes it difficult and easy for us at the same time, is make the change from the grassroots. Make the change from the age groups of four, five, six, where there is nothing that differentiates boys from girls. Make that change and there's, there's a lot that can happen. Today we've got over about 600 kids playing. As I said, only 26 of them are girls and uh, we're not proud of it. But we're proud of the fact that the progression is from 8 to 26 to now closing into 60. Mindful of time, again, um, I think the one message that I do want to give to everyone is that there is no one size fits all. We need everyone to do everything that they can. We need the general neutral leagues. We need the girls only leagues. We need the national leagues. We need more coaches. We need more Anjus and we need more Ans. Whatever you may want to do, don't think whether it's right or wrong. If it's making a difference, just go ahead and do it. Even if it touches one girl, go ahead and do it. Don't think, oh, does it fall in line with the bigger picture and so on and so forth. The bigger picture is all this an amalgamation of what everybody ends up doing. So let's just do whatever little that each and every one of us can, and we will. And that's what the national conference is for. And this alliance will help us achieve that. And again, thank you so much to Sequin. You're getting all of us to come and talk, all of us to come and collaborate, and whatever every single little person is doing will add, in, add on to the larger picture. I'd just like to end with effectively what we say at the Young Legends League. The word legend does not discriminate based on gender. So then, don't be a gender, be a legend. Alright? Thank you. Thank you so much.